Welcome back to another episode of Bourbon Lens. This is Jake along with Scott, and we are headed out to Nevada. Don't say Nevada because you would not be a local. Um, and I learned that the hard way when I visited these lovely people, some of our good friends, uh, Colby and Ashley Frey from Frey Ranch Distillery. Thank you so much for joining another episode of the Bourbon Lens, guys. Oh, nice to see you guys yeah. again. Thank you for having us. Of course. Uh, we were just chatting before here. It's been two years since we recorded with you all previously, and a lot has changed, right? The pandemic has started, maybe kind of ended uh, in that uh, time frame, and uh, you all continue to do some some great things. So we're, we're super excited to catch up with the phrase. So as, as we get started here, uh, you know, what's going on with the farm? How, how are things out your all's way in, in uh, Fallon, Nevada? No, everything's great right now. The farm, everything's still dormant. So, you know, in the summer, everything's beautiful green right now. All the plants are are dormant and waiting to come out of the, come out this spring. Uh, but right now we're getting ground ready to plant corn, um, which we'll plant around May 10th, which is kind of the magic day around here to plant corn. If you plant it too early, you have a problem of frost. If you plant it too late, you'd have a problem of not having enough days in the, the growing season to, for that corn to mature. And so... We're prepping for that right now. On yeah, the farm. we had a really nice winter. So the Sierra Nevada mountains just got hit so hard with so much snow in December. I think it was like the most snowfall they've ever gotten um, on record in December. Yeah, was it in was 2021. We, so. Yeah, we actually happened to be in Tahoe during that snow apocalypse thing. I mean, it was crazy. We couldn't even get out of the house. Um, we were they, snow, literally snowed in for a yeah. couple of days. Like the roads just had like three feet of snow on them. They weren't plowed and it was I nuts. think they called it a bomb cyclone. Yeah, like, it was nuts. So anyways, we have a, a really nice snowpack that's going to feed all of our irrigation all summer long. So oh, nice. as farmers, that makes us very happy. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's exciting. So, so corn goes in May 10th. What about your rye and your winter wheat and your, uh, your other things? Are, have, have you harvested those already? Or are those getting ready to, to be harvested? No. So we plant those in the fall and usually we harvest those and it depends on the summer, but usually around August, mm. uh, sometimes like late July, but usually in August we'll harvest those. So they're all growing right now. They're actually really pretty green, right? Cause they're all winter wheat, winter rye and winter barley. And so um, they're doing really well and they're planted and just, just waiting to get some irrigation water and some sunlight here coming up, some heat, heat days, hot days. Yeah, no, that, that's exciting. Like I know in Kentucky, we're, we're used to seeing rows and rows and rows and rows. How many more rows of corn? <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, you know, that it's, it's about that time to see them all pop up around, around the state. And, and no plot of land is too small for corn in Kentucky. So uh, a lot of things have, have changed. One of the things that... <laughs> I'd like to highlight is the hundred percent oat uh, and the hundred percent wheat that was released uh, last fall. So your grain series that's coming out, can you talk a little bit about what you all did with those grain varietals that you all put out? I think it was fall of 2021. For us, it's really important to highlight the grains that we grow here on the farm. So like a lot of people ask, are we going to, are we ever going to do like a secondary aged barrel whiskey, like a wine barrel or a sherry cask or anything like that for us, instead of doing that, we play around with mash bills. And so we did 100% oat. We did 100% wheat. We actually have a 100% corn, 100% barley. Um, we have a 100% malted barley. And then our rye, which we always have, is 100% rye that we also is available to right now. But uh, it's so that you can really truly taste what the grains taste like. And if we put any other grains with them, you'd always wonder what flavor is being contributed by which grain. And so by having 100% oat and 100% wheat, you know, you really, you know what you're drinking and you can really tell and take in what that grain is is truly tasting like and so we have our single grain series so eventually right now we have 100 percent oat and 100 percent wheat but eventually we'll also have the 100 percent corn and malted barley and, and those other grains so, and the oat and the wheat are super fun and they're just so drastically different so the oat's going to be really earthy you get a lot of taste of like peanuts and um woodsy flavors mm. while the 100% wheat is going to have more of those traditional sweet flavors. So like caramel, creme brulee, much more uh, rich viscosity. Mm. So they're drastically different and they're super fun to taste back to back. Yeah. yeah. Ironically, they're really good by themselves, but they're yeah. also really good when you blend them 50, 50 together. Oh. It's wild. <laughs> yeah. I've yeah. never done that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And those came out in 375. So they were a little smaller, right? They weren't the, the traditional 750s because 
obviously you're playing around being experimental. Yeah, we only had two barrels of the oat whiskey and we only ended up with 900, 900, 375 bottles. So not a lot of the oat whiskey and it just doesn't yield a lot in the distillery where a normal batch of bourbon gives us 11 barrels. Mm. The same batch, I guess, per of oak? Of yeah. oak would give us about two barrels. Oh, wow. Yeah, so oats themselves, like the grain is 60% holes, which is like the protective coating around the grain itself. You know, and then what we're looking for in the distillery is starch and oats don't have a lot of starch to begin with. And so it's like it, it's both of those are are really, de, you know, detracting from the amount that we get per per barrel or per batch or per batch, I guess, barrels per batch. And so uh, that's why we decided to put them in in three, seven, five is because we wanted to have more bottles. We put a bottle limit when we sell them in the tasting room so we could just get them to more people and yeah. and not just sell them all out in a in. 12 minutes, like we do some of our single barrels and everything. <laughs> no, that that's awesome. I was, I was super lucky enough to actually come in out and meet you all this year or last year, I guess. And we, we sampled some of those, those whiskeys. And I know the experimental series, as you mentioned, the malt series that, that may be coming out. There's some, there's some funky stuff, but it, it is extremely, extremely good. And I think people should be really jumping at, at the opportunity to get one of those if they if they get a chance to when they come out. I, I'm assuming maybe in 2022. Yeah. 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 Towards we, 2022 and maybe the, the end of 2022 and then some in 2023. Yeah, exactly. So that's exciting. Speaking of, of, of barrels, right? We were lucky enough to pick a barrel with you all, right? You all were super nice to say, hey, you all made the short list. We're super grateful for that. You all are like part of the Bourbon Lens family at this point, I feel like. And I hope likewise to the Frey Ranch family. And so we were we jumped at the opportunity and we we tried par- barrels um in December. It was actually the week of Christmas. And um you all were talking about going to Tahoe at that point. So this was right right all in the middle of, of how <laughs> yeah, the story right, started. <laughs> and you all have the finished product in front of us. I, I don't. Do. Uh and Scott doesn't. We're we're, we're uh waiting uh for that to, to transfer <laughs> over. But we have remnants of what we tasted back then. So can you talk a little bit about what you are doing with the single barrel program and maybe what your all's thoughts on what the finished product may be as this podcast will drop the week these barrels come out more than likely. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, so Ashley is really like involved in the single barrel program, but what we do is we take a, um, you know, when we want to bottle a batch of whiskey, like our traditional 90 proof whiskey, every batch of that is a hundred barrels, but normally we'll pull down 120 or 130 barrels and we'll taste through them all. And we'll kick the ones that out that are, are show like extreme characteristics, like might be extra fruity or extra spicy, extra woody, extra, you know, like a, creamy mouthfeel or whatever. If they show like an extreme characteristic, um, we kick it out for the barrel program. And then we, we let people like you taste through them and pick one. So, you know, that's, they're all four, like they're all four grain, um, our traditional bourbon. And the one that you picked is, is fantastic. I'm drinking it right yeah, now. Yeah. I wrote down some of my tasting notes. I don't know if you want me to share them. Oh but, yeah. We um, definitely would love for you to share. I haven't tasted, yeah, I haven't tasted this barrel since December. And we bottled it, I think, about 10 days ago and um, pulled a bottle out for today. And it's phenomenal. I'm so excited about it. I forget kind of what each barrel tastes like and why we fell in love with that original barrel. But um, as soon as I poured this one, I, it was brought back immediately. Like amazing, really rich viscosity. I'm picking up some waffle cone, peanut brittle, whoppers. And then a nice like candied fruit on the finish. So mm, yeah. And, and it's so funny because we all talked about this and we had a, a long debate and Ashley kind of mic dropped when we picked the barrel. It was like, that's the one you should go with and walked off and, and had to go be super mom. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, we went back and forth over here picking it and I was like, man, this one's really good. And now, cause it was doughy and carnival fair food. And now we, yeah. it's, it's richer that, yeah. and, and all of that is coming back and hearing your all's tasting notes as, as a finished product. I'm super excited about it, but Scott, I know you've tried it with some air in it after, after our sample. Like what are your thoughts of, of how it's matured just like in our sample bottle over the last, you know, some odd months. Yeah. I remember when we first tasted it, I think we called it like fair food, fried foods, things like that. And there was another barrel 
that I thought tasted just like oatmeal raisin cookies. And then after it's set for a little while, I think this one's kind of morphed a little bit, but it's still got that doughy characteristic, but it's, it's that cookie cinnamon raisin. It has turned into oatmeal raisin cookies, which I'm super excited about because uh, I was really torn on, you know, picking. We had, I think, four. We had four samples. Short. Yeah. And I think we were going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And at the end of it, I was like, I don't think we could pick a wrong one out. <laughs> but yeah, this one is, it's oatmeal cookies. It's cookie dough. It's got a little it, bit it of has like. That nice richness to it. Mm, yeah, yeah. That you would get with those concentrated flavors. For yeah. Sure. So it kind of like makes your mouth kind of like water on the, on like the corners of your tongue, which is, is right. really nice. And it's got a little bit of a chocolate note too, which yeah, I, I don't recall previously, but. Mm -mm. it's the viscosity the the mouthfeel on this one i think i wrote down on the first time it it had the best mouthfeel out of the four that we had and that continues here yeah um, you, you know months later so can you remind me what did this get barreled at i think it's like 128 is that correct 129.36 proof 64.68 percent so uh get get your uh your wet nap ready or your glass of water <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's got, you know, it's got a little I mean, heat behind it. I'll be honest. I poured mine and it's all gone. It does not drink like 129 proof. It doesn't. Like, no. I actually think I want a little more. Okay. Here you go. <laughs> now, I that, think that the mouthfeel really helps that because totally. you know, sometimes hot proof whiskey will have like a, a sharpness and you really feel that heat. Yeah. With this, I think it kind of like coats your tongue. Yeah. So it kind of like disperses. Ooh whatever ethanol or alcohol content there is. I mean, you can tell it's, it's a high proof whiskey, but it doesn't drink like a, like a heater as sometimes what I like to call them. No, like it, it's got warmth to it. Right. But it, it's not like over warming. And I, and I have other single barrels that I'm, I'm drinking in addition to ours because I'm like, can't talk to the phrase and just drink the ones you picked. You got to drink the ones they picked too. Cause they, they know what they're doing. They're making their own whiskey. And like, it's just, none of them have ever drank hot to me. They drink warm, right? Like they just warm you up. They make me feel like I'm getting a home cooked meal, right? Like that's just kind of how I feel. Like mama just met me at the door and gave me a hug. That's how I feel when, when Frey Ranch, when I drink some Frey Ranch uh, single barrels, uh, which is not the worst thing in the world, right? I think everyone needs a little, little <laughs> mother's love. And that leads me into, you all launched women plus whiskey yesterday for international women's day. So that would have been uh, March 8th. And you all are going to uh, work through the month of May through Mother's Day on a donation to uh, Moms on the Run uh, to up to $10,000. Can you just talk a little bit about just that initiative and why I, I wrote about this even like why I feel like you're helping lead that charge of powerful women in whiskey. And there's a ton of them, but I feel like your voice is, is kind of, you know, rising to the top in that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so um, we have a Women in Whiskey campaign. We're running March, which is Women's History Month, all the way through May, kind of ending on Mother's Day. And the significant day behind that was, um, you know, moms drink whiskey too. It's not just a gift that you can give dads for Father's Day. There's so many women out there who love American whiskey and especially bourbon. So gift your mom bourbon for Mother's Day. Totally acceptable. I would be happy. Uh, but our Women in Whiskey campaign is especially important to me because this year we're really focusing on the power of mentorship and how women can uplift other women and pave the way for them. And super important for us at Freight Ranch because I've been um, on both sides of it. We're early on, you know, when me and Colby were starting and I guess not even really when we were starting, but when we were starting to pulling down whiskey and thinking of, you know, what our flavor profiles were going to be and how we were going to bottle it at what proof and what age. We had a really um, amazing woman, Heather Green, um, come to the ranch and she actually has her own brand now, um, Million and Green yeah, um, out of Texas. And she's got an amazing palate. She's a super taster. And when she came to the ranch and really guided us through this process and helped us you know, evaluate all of our whiskeys. I thought, what a really cool mentor in the whiskey industry to have this strong female, you know, helping me and Colby. And um, I thought, you know, as 
this was only a couple of years ago, but like, I'd love to be like her one day and, and really have a strong sense of like what each of the whiskey barrels is contributing to the overall flavor profile. Um, so I, I really appreciate her mentorship and I, I want to pass it on and really be a mentor to other women and open the door to them and show them that there is a space for women in, in whiskey. And, you know, it's one of the fastest, fastest growing uh, categories. So really proud to be here and, and share that story. No, I, I think that that's amazing. And, you know, whether it's you or Marianne Eves, what she did at Castle and Key or, totally, yeah. um, you know, the folks, and I, and I don't know everyone's name or Peggy No Stevens or the folks down in Tennessee that have done, you know, master distillate at Dickel and, and, um, Ashley Barnes, uh, at Cardinal Spirits, right? There's a lot of folks that you can name that are trailblazing. Nancy Fraley, for gosh sakes, her fingers are all over whiskey. It seems like right. it's just so cool to see that uplifting and empowering of other women in this, you know, what tends to be, you know, man's drink. It's not a man's drink. It's a drink yeah. for everyone. It's America's spirit and America's is, mainly yeah. women. <laughs> like, <laughs> like we are yeah, 54% women in this country. Yeah. And I think that for me, it's really important to not exclude anybody. And it's not about like excluding men. It's just about being equal, like on the mm. same playing field. Yep. So that's, that's what I love about our women in whiskey campaign. We also have a great charitable contribution with it. So um, we're donating a dollar from every bottle sold at select stores. We're donating it back, donating it back to moms on the run, which is an organization that helps women that are suffering from breast cancer. Uh, my mom is a breast cancer survivor, so that is near and dear to my heart to be able to give back to an organization that helps so many people who are um, emotionally and physically going through the the trauma of being diagnosed and um, suffering through breast cancer. So I'm going to go off the cuff here and say we have the single barrel releasing. Can we be a part of this? Yeah, absolutely. That would be amazing. So Scott, of course. thank you. So Scott, what are you, are you, are you in? I'm in, I'm in if you're in. Yeah, we're yeah. in. Okay. So we, we <laughs> are in for, in. for a uh, dollar a bottle for our, our yeah. bourbon lens pick. We will uh, donate to uh, this cause. So we'll, we'll figure that all on the back end, but we would love to, to support this. I think it's, it's a great cause. In, in my day job, I work in healthcare um, on the insurance side. And, you know, I understand the importance of mammographies. My wife's a nurse practitioner. I, wow, I understand yeah. like all of that, th those facets of understanding breast cancer and breast cancer awareness. We don't always have the opportunity to get women the services they need. Uh, and this would go a long way. So we would love to do a little contribution along with you also. That's that's, awesome, that's that's completely off the cuff, but you know we want to support you, you all because, like I said earlier, y'all are part of the Bourbon Lens family, and we want to support the things that you all are are doing there uh, at the ranch because it's a it's an amazing place where you can go sh shoot corn guns, and uh, we'll talk about that momentarily <laughs> because uh, it's a destination trip to go to Fallon. So coming off of that, right? There's this one thing that's been teased. Uh, that that may be happening at the ranch. And so you have this 100% beautiful uh, rye whiskey, right? That, that's what you put out, uh, 90 proof. No, it's actually 100 proof, bottled and bond. It's bottled and bond, yeah, 100% yeah, rye. And there's been this tease that there could be a barrel proof version of that. Can you put any any words to, uh, is that is that in the works for Frey Ranch? Yeah, so, I think it's. Yeah, we have. The I barrels. think we can confirm that it's. Yeah. it's definitely a thing. It's. Um, we have the barrels yeah. picked, and um, we just we don't know quite when we're going to release them yet, but it's going to be sometime soon. So, if anybody wants that, join our mailing list because that's where we'll announce it first. Yeah, I, I'm super excited about it. I think your rye super unique. This this the rye category needs uniqueness, right? Because Kentucky style rye whiskey is corn. Uh, with a little bit of rye. And then you have 95.5 Indiana style rye, because that's a category now. And then you have New York is standing up Empire rye, and that's a whole new thing. And then you have Pennsylvania rye. Now we just need that 100% rye category. So I, I love the diversity that's coming with that, uh, different mash bills, different concepts. So sign up for Frey Ranch's mailing list. How can they do that? So you can go to our website, freyranch.com. Um, you can join the email list via the pop-up on our homepage. There we go. And we promise not to spam you. We really only try send emails when we have something fun or important to announce. So 
It'll be worth it. Yeah. Sorry for all of you Bourbon Lens listeners that have signed up for our mailing list. You get one every week. <laughs> <laughs> Every Most Wednesday. weeks. Hey, I've been good since the turn of, of the year. I said I'm committed to sending a mailer out every since Wednesday. You, yeah, since you started celebrating Whiskey Wednesday. Whiskey Wednesday. Yeah, I, I have blocked my calendar for 9 a.m. for 30 minutes, and I record our whiskey podcast recap, and I send out our mailing list. Nice. Yeah. Well, you'll definitely want to be on the Bourbon Lens podcast when they announce that they have their single barrel from Free Ranch because it's delicious. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited about just getting our bottles so that we can take pictures of it and then drink it and then have a order more of it myself. (laughs) Cause I know, I know Scott and I will probably order a few of these, uh, for backups. always, Always order a couple extra, but I think this one will probably be more like a few. Yeah. And my bar back is, is becoming just bourbon lens picks. So like everything that may be fancy is just going away and it's just like, anything that we've picked is, is now going like up on top of the shelf. So I'm like, guys, this is house bourbon. Now <laughs> our house whiskey, yeah, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, you get, uh, you get our stuff. Um, so that that's exciting. So we're, we're really close to this and it, my mouth is watering on, on getting our pick now that Ashley and Colby have talked about yeah. it. Um, so what, what do you have going on at the distillery over the next few months other than planting corn? Is there any, any cool activities happening in Fallon or, or are you all just really getting ready for crop season? Yeah. So um, like I, Colby mentioned, he's going to be farming a lot this summer. We've got a great snowpack. So I suspect that we're just going to go full farming season um, in the next like month or so. But I'm really excited for some of our single barrel releases. We've got a women in whiskey Mm. single barrel that's actually launching uh, this weekend in our tasting room, which will be really, really fun. We get a great crowd that comes out to Fallon and and it's surprising how far people travel to the distillery. We've got groups that come from Sacramento, San Francisco. I mean, we have people that come from San Diego. They drive up. I mean, they're driving all night to get here and they like line up at seven. It's like 600 miles, I think. Yeah. It's wild. And those are, I mean, Jake knows this, but we live on property. So I like get up in the morning and I look out the window and I'm like, there's already a line. You know? <laughs> Six thirty in the morning. There's people, people standing there. We don't open until twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Can they come oh, for we, breakfast? We, yeah. Yeah. So um, we always go out and hang out, and and you got to meet Russell, our master distiller. Mm. So he's always like, "Come in my office." We always go out there stuff. and get him coffee. Yeah, and it's take been a lot of fun. And... We don't have anybody that's like camped overnight yet, but. Someday. Now that I say that, we'll have yeah. it. <laughs> well, because because Russell doesn't live far either, right? Like Russell's no, on, no. on property yeah. as well, right? So, you know, he's getting the full effect of it. And, and, you know, that's the one thing that I appreciated the most about visiting was just how tight the family is, right? Like you right. and you all and Russell and his wife, you know, she was working in the tasting room with us and and Mike and, and everyone else, right? Like it was, it was so tight. Uh, and it was just a joy to be there because you could see that everyone liked to work, right? That was the most important thing. Everyone enjoyed their job, but it was it was a family and everyone treated each other as such. And and the key thing is if you can go there and you can get Colby to fire up the old uh, John Deere tractor to uh, make ice cream. Oh, yeah. 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 Ice cream machine. yeah because so the ice cream a, machine is fire. Yeah, it's a 1928 hit and miss John Deere. Um, it's called a hit and miss engine. It's uh, they're so efficient and so cool. They pop and then they spin for a second and they pop again and it's spinning this big flywheel <laughs> and it spins a five gallon ice cream maker. And so uh, my my dad and I made the wagon that it sits on and everything. Which five gallons of ice cream is a lot of it ice cream. It doesn't sound like that much, but it's a lot. Like it's yeah. a lot of ice cream. It's entirely way too much for one day, but we're used to it. We, yeah. We've got like cartons. It's really good later. Put it in the freezer. It lasts oh. a long yeah. time. It's super cool. I mean, and then you all had some uh, bourbon caramel so uh, drizzle. Yeah. That was like to die for. So yeah. I'm, and, and Scott, this isn't talking about food and like the fact that I'm hungry. It's the food, the fact that I, I went there and they gave us this amazing ice cream and I, you know, got to talk about it because well, I'm just, I'm just, I've told you this since you went, but I'm still very, very jealous that you went and I didn't, but, uh, 
<laughs> well, yeah, so maybe, maybe next time. So th- yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. The the bourbon lens has to uh, make a trip out to to Fallon because Reno is a lot of fun too, and yeah. it's it's yeah. not too far away, and it's a beautiful drive. That that was the one thing that kind of not surprised me. Um, but like going into Northern Nevada where you all are, it's a beautiful countryside going up there to your all's farm, which, which I thought was nice. And, you know, only about an hour and a half drive from Reno. So, you know, that's, yeah, we're also close to Tahoe. You guys could go hang out there. So lots of stuff. to Do Do you all ski? Are you skiers or snowboarders? So I used to be, and then last year I went skiing a little bit and then I haven't been this year. It's just, I never have time, but I, I want to go. And I always think like maybe next weekend and then it doesn't work out maybe next weekend. And then I've asked actually like two or three times this year, can we go next weekend and just remind me we have something to do and can't go or something happens. Yeah. So our kids are at the age where we do more sledding than skiing, mm. which is super fun too. But yeah, I want to get back on the slopes. It would be super fun. Yeah. And with the like epic snowstorm and snowpack we have this year, it's a shame. Well, there's so much snow that all the ski resorts shut down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, nobody could get to them, you know? Yeah. It was wild. Well, I got an itch to try it because I was in Park City not too long ago and I saw like people snowboarding and skiing. And I'm like, if if I'm going to do it, I should do it here. But then I'm like, those are probably like terrible l- slopes to learn on. I've never skied in my life and I feel like I would die. Uh, big man fall hard. That's kind of the the yeah. uh, thought process. And and you all know, like I'm I'm not a small person, so that's the only thing holding me back from skiing is the fact that I, I think if if I fell, I might break something. <laughs> if you come up here, I'll take you, and it'll we'll, I'll be easy on you. Uh, God, we were at um, North Star, I guess, back in like June, maybe December, and they had the the whisk ski bar, and it was like literally a ski up. Whis- whiskey bar. Oh, nice. So that's that's what you need. Yeah, that's it was an need. airstream that that had hot toddies and and straight whiskey, whatever you know. Yeah, it was. Yeah, cool. I would just I would just need to get there, and then exactly, yeah, I, would just, yeah. I would just be committed to staying there, <laughs> and that would be yeah. my excuse for not skiing. So. Maybe you can ride up the chairlift, ha- ride down on your sled to the whiskey bar, hang out there. The and whiskey then, bar, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean that's. That's perfect branding for Frey Ranch. Right? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just saying, like, so, I, I'm not fun. a marketing person. I'm in sales, <laughs> though. Like, that just screams and sales. What's cool is some of that water that they, they're skiing on, the snow, is what comes down, eventually makes its way down to the farm that we irrigate our crops with. So, like, you're, you're literally skiing on future whiskey in a certain way. You <laughs> so, know what I mean? So, that's my question. Like, as I know, like, how sustainable you all are, right? Like, your all's leftover mash goes to the farm that like gets the manure that, you know, feeds your field. How far is that snowpack from the actual ranch? You know, that's a good question. I don't know about like the meandering river and how long it is directly, but it's probably about 80 miles. Okay. And so there's a river and there's two rivers that flow. So the, um, the Truckee and the Carson rivers, they both originate on both sides of Lake Tahoe. Mm. The Truckee River actually gets water from Lake Tahoe and it goes to Lahant Reservoir, Reservoir, and that's where we get all of our water that flows from. It's all gravity. Yeah. And so that's why we're not consuming a lot of electricity. Like a lot of um, farms in Nevada, especially, have to use deep wells and a lot of electricity. And, you know, we're, we're really fortunate. Everything's all gravity and really efficient. Well, and, and that's a whole other thing, like I thought was really interesting that we won't get into in this podcast, but like, I would love at one point to nerd out about the sustainability of your all's farm, because we were literally like in the still house talking about sustainability for 45, 50 minutes, like, and, and God love Mark Gillespie, right? Because whiskey cast is amazing and he does great things. But like that man asked some really good questions. You could tell he was in media for a long time, but like we talked about sustainability in your all's farm, literally from the time we started with the still to the time we left the fermenters. Um, and that, that was the the beauty of it is how self-sustaining it is. Um, so next podcast, when we keep up with the phrase again, uh, we'll talk about the sustainability of the farm and, and hopefully Scott, it's when we're in Fallon. Yeah. I, I, I love it. That's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. And that's what we do. We call it common sense sustainability. We do it because it's the right thing to do, not because it's a trendy thing to do. 
And then it just ties into our bottle. At the bottom of every one of our bottles, I'm pretty sure you guys noticed, it says, be good to the land yep. and the land will be good to you. And it's like our, it's our foundation as a farm. If we don't take really good care of the farm, we don't take really good care of our environment and our natural resources, then we don't have a future as farmers. So it's really important for us to, to take good care of it and pass it on to our kids in as good or better condition than we received it in. Yeah. And, and I think that's pretty amazing. And I, I was just looking at the bottle because the bottle is like, you all have maybe the heaviest bottle in whiskey, first of all, but one of the most beautiful bottles in whiskey. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, that was all Ashley. <laughs> yes. I, w- I worked with the design team on it and I will tell you, it probably took about a year from like initial ideas to the actual finished product, maybe even a little longer. And I say what was so important to me and Colby was that every little aspect of the design tied back to us on the farm. So Mm -hmm. everything from like the color of the label with that beautiful yellow is the same color as the corn growing in the field to the topper in the shape of a bolt. Well, that's a tool that you would see here on the farm all the time to the shape of the label being how it like wraps all the way around. Um, really represents a belt and a belt buckle that was passed down from Colby's grandfather to his dad and then to Colby. And then, of course, the embossing on the bottom of the glass, they'll be good to the land and the land will be good to you. It was a lot of work, but I'm so happy with the way it turned out. I know that when me and Colby saw the the glass come off the bottling line and we had it done in Mexico City, Mm. it was an absolute we were, like, yeah, treat was, to, to be down there and, and see like the first bottles come off the It took the us 24 line. hours to get there. We got off the plane. They took us right to the bottling plant. We hadn't slept in like 24 <laughs> hours plus, but we were like so excited and wide yeah, awake because it was yeah. so cool, you know? Yeah. Like it is one of my favorite bottles of whiskey. Uh, Scott, I know you've said it from the time you first saw this bottle, like you absolutely fell in love with it. Yeah. Very, very early in the podcast. When yeah. this bottle showed up, I was like, holy cow. It was your it was your first release. It was, yeah, batch one. Yeah. Yeah. And first. now and now you see it everywhere and it's just like part part of it is because it's so damn attractive. The the second part is because it's so damn good. Yeah. So it's like you want to have a bottle on your bar no matter what. Yeah. So I love yeah. the vibrant colors. I think um for me and Colby it was just as much about like looking at what we've done on the farm as, you know, just a nod to the past. And you look at a lot of bottles and they kind of go with those sepia tones. And, you know, for us, we wanted something that popped and really represented like the modern take on farming and agriculture. Cause Mm. when you look at the farming aspects of laser leveling your fields and the flood irrigation techniques that Colby uses, that's so important to that common sense sustainability in our overall story that we wanted to like look forward and not, not back. Yeah. yeah. We do a lot of things like we, we do things like my grandpa, that May 10th corn planting date that we were talking about. Um, that's something my grandpa figured out and we still abide by this day. That's, you know, that's something that we do old, but then we do, we try to take what's available to us today and improve on that, you know? Yeah. You know, like being out there, like I didn't realize how much land, like that you all are actually farming. Like there's just, cause there's so much more than just whiskey, right? Like you were like, that's an alfalfa field and that's a X field and that's a Y field. And you're like, holy crap. And then we like are picking off like corn and like chucking it at each other. Like we're a bunch of teenagers. Um, <laughs> and that was, that was a funny thing and all in itself. It just brought back so many memories of, of being out there. And like, as a kid, like I shucked corn with my grandfather and like being out there and like, playing around the corn with Susanna and some other, the folks like clay. And it's like, you know, that was like my childhood, like that slash punishment was I had to shut corn and like pick <laughs> green beans. Like those are things that I, I just think about. And like, it just, it brings back memories. Right. And it, and it just brings back to, you know, you're saying like, be good to the land and, and the land will be good back to you. And ultimately you produce a really damn good whiskey off of that. And it's a lot, of, yeah, it's a lot of fun to watch the crops grow and then, you know, kind of nurture them through that growing process, harvest them, watch them go in the silos and know that like you are part of that whole process and that none of those ingredients have ever left our possession. 
um, until, you know, we send like your single barrel to you. And that, that means a lot to me and Colby because it's a piece of our life and it's a piece of who we are ultimately and something that we're really proud of. That's why it's so fun and meaningful for us to, you know, have a product. Yeah. Like we, we, we put away all this whiskey. We waited for five plus mm-hmm. years till we bottled it or sold any of it. And, um, for us to like finally be able to share it with everybody and to drink it with people and, mm-hmm. you know, do these barrel picks. It's so, so, um, Rewarding. Rewarding for us. Rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm so excited after talking to you all for the last 37 minutes, plus whatever we talked about beforehand to get our, our barrel, like in our bottles in hand, Scott, I don't know about you, but like, I'm like, I'm itching. Like I got a, like a rash and I, I need more cowbell. I got a fever and I need more cowbell. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm super excited just to see. I mean, the last time you guys were on the podcast, Almost two years ago now, we were introduced to your product like two and a half years ago, and now we're going to have a single barrel. I'm, that's just exciting to me. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, and, I, and I truly mean this. Like, it, it's so cool to grow with your brands you've worked with from the beginning. Like, and that's that's the cool thing because we know how many people have like sought after Frey Ranch because us or whomever has talked about it and they're like, this is really good whiskey and you need to find it. And on the East coast, unless you like have figured out how to do it online, like you don't have it. And so Mm -hmm. like to be able to bring a great representation of your whiskey to our listenership, like that gets me excited because I know that people will fall in love with the Frey ranch that we fell in love with two plus years ago. And, and, and that gets me like excited because I want people to drink other stuff, right? Like there's great whiskey in Kentucky, but guess what? There's some really good whiskey made in Fallon, Nevada. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that means a lot. And we appreciate you for, for you know, right at yeah, the beginning, you taking us on. Yeah, one of our first yeah. podcasts that we ever did. So to be able to, uh, I don't even think we had a barrel program when we did no, the we first, didn't. No, first we weren't even podcast. close. I don't even think we had a rye at that time. Yeah. So it's, I mean, no, you had a you had, had a small had batch small bourbon. bourbon. Yeah. 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 Just the so bourbon. It is full circle and it's super I cannot wait for you guys yeah. to get your barrel. Yeah. yeah. We're honored to do that with you guys. Yeah, no, it, it's so great. Now I uh need to figure out how I can buy one of those hoodies that you have on, Colby. Oh, yeah. Just send me your, your address and your size. <laughs> because uh I, that the hat unfortunately doesn't fit my giant head. <laughs> he needs a big guy hat. Yeah, yeah. I, I need I need to to like get my head measured uh for like Guinness Book of World's record. <laughs> uh no. I don't know. The phrase have some pretty big heads. Yeah. So. I I'm, I'm still I'm only I'm still I got two. No, I, I, I'm I'm on one. When I put that thing my, on, uh, I'm on a one. Yeah, my my daddy, he can't even button it and it's like not even like if it had two more, I don't even think it would fit. <laughs> I heard there's a hat company that's made for big headed individuals. So huh. we're going to have to look Jake, into that. Yeah. Jake, I think we need to track that down because I, I saw it on YouTube. I think somebody had an ad. I guess somebody <laughs> had a big head. And uh, so somebody go. got really smart with their money. <laughs> <laughs> XL hats. Yeah. So as we wrap up tonight, it's been a great pleasure to have you and Colby on. Because I'm speaking to Ashley in particular, because she's the brains of this operation. I know, Colby, you're the hands on it. <laughs> you know, I just want to make sure the listeners know where they can find out more information about you all. Because I know, Ashley, you put a lot of work into social media. So I don't want people to miss out on that. So yeah. where can people connect with you all? You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, um, our website, frameranch.com. Follow us on all of our social channels. Join our email list. We are constantly putting out a ton of content and we do a really good job on our marketing team of really telling our story on our our social media. So you're going to get that behind the scenes look of day to day life on the farm. And then you'll get that firsthand look of any single barrel releases or any new releases on our email list. Yeah. Well, everyone, make sure you go sign up for that because you need to. And everyone make sure you sign up for the Bourbon Lens mailing list because the Frey Ranch pick is coming soon. And if you don't do that, you're going to miss out. So thanks everybody for listening to another episode of the Bourbon Lens. 
We really appreciate it. If you would like, rate us, give us a five-star review on your favorite podcast listening app. Please make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and TikTok at Bourbon Lens. And last but not least, uh, check out patreon.com backslash bourbon lens for exclusive tasting opportunities, potentially with the phrase, as well as early barrel pick opportunities as we release those and exclusive content. And until next time, cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers, everybody. Bye.